All right, episode number three, rolling in, get it, rolling in at you. Yet another busy, fun-filled week. Lots of stuff going on, but uh, I want to address kind of what's going on with a question I got. But more so, we're going to talk a little bit today about guitar courses. You know, that's kind of the business that I'm in aside from playing music for a living. I mean, it's, it's a juggling act between, you know, doing gigs with artists, my own music, recording session work here in the studio, plus making guitar courses and making YouTube videos. It's a constant daily gig. You can probably hear also some birds chirping outside. Finally, we got some sunshine. The snow was melted. Nashville had snow, which was crazy. And it stayed here for a while because they don't know how to get rid of it here. <laughs> Not like up north what I'm used to. In any case, um, so I wanted to talk about a few things. Let's talk about guitar courses real quick and how to choose one, how to use one. You know, guitar courses and guitar instructors, there's so many of them out there. And when I started playing guitar and studying with instructors in real life, in person, some of the best ones I had recommended other ones. They said, you know, you should definitely study with more than one instructor. And that's what's cool about today's day and age is that we can do that. We can study with our favorite guitar players. Um, now, not always are they the best teachers in the world, but hopefully some stuff is transcribed and presented in such a way that we can take some things and use it for our own playing. I've tried to really work on being a the best player I can, the best communicator I can. That's really, really important to me because it's not just for guitar courses, it's for life in general. I mean, my communication skills has gotten me a lot more gigs than just making guitar courses at True Fire or with Brett or anybody like that. So, in any case, you got a lot to choose from. I treat them like textbooks. You know, when you had a textbook in school, you didn't read it from front to back. You didn't learn everything that was in it. They said, okay, turn to page 78 today. We're going to talk about the Mayans, you know, or we're going to talk about, uh, you know, this aspect of chemistry today. And it's the book has the topic, the teacher sets the curriculum. Um, and same thing with guitar courses. You might buy a guitar course for 20, 30 bucks, which is a steal, regardless of what it is. This is somebody's years of knowledge they've condensed down into a $30 package or less or more. Um, and you know, it, not all of it will work for you, but that's okay. Same thing with a song. When you transcribe a song, not all of what you get out of the song will work for you either. Okay. So experiment. You're going to latch on to people that you like. Thankfully, a lot of folks have latched on to what I do. I love that. And I'm really, really thankful for all of your continued support. But dip a toe in the water. Don't get freaked out if you drop 30, 40 bucks and didn't work out for you. Sorry, they're not all going to be winners. I mean, I have milk crates full of instruction books and DVDs and cassette tapes and VHS tapes that I can't tell you everything that I've learned on. I mean, there's no time in the world to learn everything that's in those. And gosh, if I did, who knows? <laughs> I don't know if I'd ever be happy because I'd know all so much about everything that I wouldn't be able to focus. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but it's all about taking little bits along the way. Think about you and your job or how you came up as a person. You pick things up along the way. You didn't just go on one path, right? So that's what's going to happen with your guitar courses too. So when you find one, don't get, don't expect the world, <laughs> but also take from it what you can, all right? Because they're not always going to give you um, everything maybe that they deliver. Is that right to say? I guess my point is, you don't have to go from beginning to end to get something out of it, okay? And just because you do doesn't mean you're going to be that player at the end of it. You're probably not going to be, all right? So it's all about experimentation. Um, and, you know, use your gut. If a person is really speaking to you and they're really saying, ah, I've never heard anybody say that, it makes a lot of sense, um, then there's a good chance you're going to get something out of, their, out of their teaching. There's so many people out there doing it um, that you're going to connect with someone and that's who you want to ride along with or have them be the tour guide. That's what I call myself, the tour guide on the journey, right? You're, it's, it's your guitar journey. I'm going to try to put you on the right path and nudge you back on when you get off, okay? We can talk about so much of that, and we we can we'll continue as well. Uh, we'll continue to as well. But also, one last thing on that. You know, I would never discredit anybody for what they've done or haven't done in the music world, but you can definitely tell when somebody has experience in a lot of different genres, styles, situations. I think it comes out in their playing, in their teaching, in their communicating. That's something I always look for too, because I'm a I'm a student. I just got three or four new books in the mail today. Because what I try to do is. 
I like books. I read them, I take little things, and then sometimes I turn them out into my own language in my own lessons. And it turns out to be pretty fun and useful for you guys too. All right, that's a quick note about guitar courses. Uh, and someone had a question too about my home setup. We're gonna be getting questions about that all the time. He said, uh, oh, where is it? Um, we, can we hear more about your usage of the aux attenuator? I noticed you had two of them. Would it be a good tool for someone with a, that's a late beginner? You know, I'm actually gonna say no. I don't think it's gonna be the best tool for a late beginner. It's a great attenuator, um, but really that's only a small part of what it is. It's more of what I would call a guitar recording system. They took a, a great studio and put it into a box digitally, and you can replicate cabinets, mics, room sound, great effects that were in studios back in the day, and even how they're applied, because it's different than just a, a guitar pedal. So I do have two of them, and what we're gonna watch is a quick little iPhone video of how I have everything set up. It's gonna take 30 seconds or so. But I have an aux for each amp, because you can't do more than one amp per aux. Um, and they're made by Universal Audio, who is making these killer pedals now that are gonna hit the market. And I'm gonna be doing a really cool project with them and Truefire, creating a virtual tone course on how to get great sounds, how to use these pedals, and more. So let's just watch this little video real quick from my phone, and then I'll come back and say goodbye. All right, so I thought I'd take you through a mini tour really fast of the signal chain for this UA video I'm going to do. Um, we're gonna come out of my guitar here and then travel all the way over to the pedal board. That's my big studio pedal board. Now, the cool thing about that, and let's see if we can get it here. It's kind of dark over here, but there's multiple outputs built on the side of that. And what happens is there's actually a send and return. So it goes all the way through these drive pedals and after the dude, it sends the signal out and then comes back in and I can go through this other stuff if I want to. And that's what I want to do today because we're going to send to the UA Golden Reverberator. And why do I have a level there? Well, that's because I'd like to try to keep my pedals level. <laughs> back out of that into the board, out of the board into a radial AB box. The AB box goes to the amps. So one side is for the two rock, the Bloomfield drive on the right. The other side is for the Marshall. Each one has an aux. Whoop, there it is. This is the aux for the two rock, and that's the aux for the Marshall. I just didn't want to keep stacking stuff up there. Out of the auxes, back to my computer, i.e. the Universal Audio interface, and then that gets recorded to what you guys hear. And then I have camera one, camera two, and then these are really cool little monitors that are also hard drives. They're called Atomos drives. And basically the hard drive, it's, it's, not, a, it's, not, a, it's not a card, it's an actual drive that you plug into the computer. Now I usually have my bills and a bunch of other junk here too as well. Some notes, there's an old Fender neck I'm putting back together, Don Mock book, Jick Korea book, humidifier, very important. Looks like it just ran out of water. But that's kind of the signal flow. What's cool is with this AB box here, I can switch between both of those, either of those amps or both, and I can hear the effect with either amp. Pretty cool, lots of fun. All right, so I gotta get back to work. Got a fresh cut, gotta shoot some more videos for these pedals, these killer universal audio pedals. Oh man, I'm gonna tell you guys so much more about these in upcoming videos. Really cool, the reverb is hooked up. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is episode number three of Working Class Guitar because that's what I'm doing here, making money as much as I can, when I can, highs and lows all the time. That's kind of without wrong. Now I'm saying I do it for a living, which means you know I'm spinning a lot of plates, trying to keep the new roof over my head. Um, I'm going to look into a new furnace, a bunch of other stuff. So got to take on more gigs, more jobs, so that I can do all that home improvement stuff that we're always doing, right? All right, thanks for watching. This is episode number three. I'll see you in a week or so with some more fun thoughts and things to talk about in episode four. All right, take care. Talk soon.